Hi, and welcome to the Tranquil Cottage Knits podcast. Take six. <laughs> I'm your host, Michelle. You can find me on Ravelry as Tranquil Cottage, Instagram as Tranquil Cottage Knits, and you can find the blog at www.tranquilcottageknits.weebly.com. So hi, happy Sunday. Today is Sunday, February 18th, 2018, and this, this is episode, I think, 27, maybe 28. We'll have to check. Um, so I hope everybody has been doing well. It has actually been a couple of weeks since I podcasted. I'm off my schedule. Um, so there's been some going on here. I have been working on some house projects over the weekends. Um, I painted our front door and um, <clears throat> revamped the foyer a bit and um, just been working on some other projects around the house that we really needed to get done. When we initially purchased our house, uh, as you can maybe guess by the horribly dingy and unattractive baby blue walls behind me, um, our house was a, was a foreclosure and when we initially moved in, literally we got the house and the day we moved in, or my husband moved us in, I was actually having major surgery. And after that point, I was down for, uh, I had four months before I was allowed to lift more than five pounds. Uh, and then by that time, I was back to work full time and I had a five hour commute. So when, once you've moved into a house, it gets really, really hard to do things like paint the walls because all the furniture and everything's already there. Um, <clears throat> and so we are slowly working on getting the house straight, but it is, so much more of a slow process than it would be if you know you had a essentially a house that was a blank canvas an empty blank canvas and you could paint everything and then let it dry and then move everything in um it would be so much easier um so we're kind of doing it backwards but that's us um, I am hanging out here in the tranquil cottage with Callie and Tucker um Callie thankfully now has a bone. You may hear her crunching in the background, but she uh, she's the reason this is like take five or six. Um, she decided a few minutes ago that she was going to completely attack me and lick my face off. I don't even know. I don't even know why. It's ridiculous. Uh, <clears throat> we've also had some snow here. Uh, which is really cool because Callie loves, loves to chase snowballs and catch snowballs. So you ball up some for her and then you throw it and I, she just thinks that's like the coolest thing. It's like ice cubes that you can play ball with. It's like her favorite thing ever. Um, and uh, other than that, everybody, everybody is doing well. I have not uh, been spinning lately. I have my spinning wheel down in the basement um, with us trying to do things in the house and move furniture and stuff. Just I wanted to keep her safe so she is down in the basement and that's where she's going to remain until I have the living room situated to the way I want it. So um, there will not be any spinning in the foreseeable future probably. Unless I get my drop spindle out. That's a possibility. Anyway, um, <clears throat> so finished object. Uh, this is the vine leaf cowl. Uh, it is a craftsy class and the yarn is uh, my hand dyed in, I don't remember the colorways I named them, but it is it's a merino cashmere nylon blend. Um, and it, this is worsted weight. The I believe the pattern was done in DK, um, but I just did it in worsted. I was okay with the cowl being a bit chunkier. Uh, and the pattern actually has you do a band of garter stitch at the edge. Um, I didn't like the look of it. It, I don't know. I just liked the idea of ribbing going into the brioche and um, being carried all the way to the end. To me, it's, it's cleaner it's i don't know i just i visually i just liked it more but oh my goodness brioche is so squishy i've heard people say it's squishy but it's kind of the way they say like um like the lularo leggings are buttery soft it's like you put them on you're like holy moly yes they are um 
but it, it's kind of the same thing. I hear people talk about how squishy brioche is. Um, I've had a couple patterns I have wanted to knit forever and I just haven't done them because I haven't had the confidence, not the confidence, I didn't have the brioche skill down yet. Um, I, for some reason, just had a hard time picking it up the way I watched YouTube videos, went back and forth and just couldn't get the hang of it. And then I watched a craftsy class um, and easy peasy. It, I had it in a few minutes and within I think one maybe one and a half pattern repeats I was not even looking at the pattern anymore I was just knitting by uh, reading my stitches and so I was really heartened by uh, how well I was able to pick it up through the through the craftsy class and oh I don't know if you guys can see the variegation in that red that's behind it's an orangey red with pops of green um, and I dyed them back in the summer I think and um, the blue I know the blue was um, I believe it was the berries I ate too soon because I was horrible about picking our black raspberries too early and they were really tart and then when I would find one that I missed it was so delightful uh, but so anyway, uh, I liked the contrast. Um, and I mean, I've got a couple of light pops and a couple of really like dark, intense pops. There's a light pop, there's a lighter pop, and there's some intensity there and there. Um, but the behind it, where it's green, oh, that green with the orange, it is so autumnal that I just. Oh, it makes me happy. It makes me so happy. Let's see the colors. Oh, it is actually in person. Oh, that's a little better. But in person, it is super rich. That, ooh, kind of get a little bit more richness there. No, not there. Block out the light. That's about it. It is really rich. Um, and it's so pretty. Callie Hush. It is so pretty and it is so squishy and I am so in love with it. Um, so this is the Va uh, Brioche Vine Cowl and it's available through Craftsy. Um, and it was so much fun to knit. It really was. And I am a Brioche, well, not a convert because I was already very, very interested in the technique. Um, had I not been so enamored with, uh, Amy Beth, who does the Fat Squirrel Speaks, had I not been so enamored with Amy Beth's Excuse Me Poncho, which was kind of flippin' amazing, amazing, uh, I don't know that I would have been so inspired to even try brioche. Um, but after, after seeing that and being so impressed with it and how pretty it was, I was just like, this is a skill I have got to get under my belt. And so now I have, and it's much less intimidating. And um, I just love this thing. It's so squishy and warm and just, oh, it's happiness on my neck. Um, so the next thing, sorry about the wrinkling, the crinkling. The next thing that will be coming around um, I would like to try some brioche and yarn that is much lighter weight uh, because I would like my finished object to be um, kind of not necessarily light and airy, but brioche does eat up a lot of yarn. Um, and this is, this is pretty dense. I mean, this is, this is, this is heavy and the knitting is pretty dense and it's very thick and I want to see what it's going to be like, what brioche is going to be like in fingering. So, how pretty are these? These are Wonderland yarns. Sorry, I keep knocking the, keep knocking the laptop. I'm trying to see if I can get the colorways. Um, okay, so these are, um, ah, yay, I got the tag. Hmm. Wonderland Yarns, which is 
um, which is like a subsect of fractious fibers. I love fractious fibers. So here is their label. And it's just a merino nylon blend, but it is so super bouncy. It's got such a good twist. And um, the colors were were just lovely. It it this one reminds me of mint chocolate chip ice cream. It's minty and it's got the flecks of a deeper green and some flecks of brown. And this one is just the deeper green. So the um the brand is Wonderland Yarns. It is their Mary Ann line, which is a, a sock or fingering weight. It's 475 yards in four ounces. It's 85% merino, 15% nylon. The green color weight is more slumber. And and I don't know what the other one is because I pulled the tag out to read it and didn't put it back. But these are going to be my next project for Brioche. I can't wait. I'm so excited. I'm so excited to knit this. Do you get excited about yarn like this? It's a little ridiculous, right? If only I could get this excited about sweeping a floor! Or doing some dishes, or maybe laundry, or vacuuming, mopping. If only I could generate that kind of enthusiasm, the kind that I have for yarn, or housework. I actually have a little sign um, that hangs uh, that's hang from to hang for my craft room that says "Crafting forever, housework never." or crafting whenever, housework never, something like that. Um, and I had found it somewhere and it made me laugh. Um, I had found it years ago when I was li when we were living in um, in the co cottage in the valley and I just went ahead and got it because so me. <laughs> so that is what is upcoming for my knits. And um, other than that, I haven't really really finished anything I'm looking at my cart that sits next to my um, I have a like a four rack shelf that sits next to my comfy chair that's where I watch TV or movies and knit and watch craftsy classes and apparently get my face licked off by the dog so um, wow. we had snow did I mention that already So our entire backyard where the dog run is, is all mush. It's just mush and mud and muck. I hate going out there now. Um, but that is, that is craziness. Dogs are so dirty. I had, to, I had to give Tucker a bath the other day, and he was not pleased. It takes two of us to give him a bath. Of course, he weighs about 104 pounds now, and we have to put the leash on him and drag him upstairs. Not happy. Put him into the shower, the walk-in. It has to be my walk-in shower, and the door has to be shut, and Justin has to stand there holding the door shut as I stand in the shower and bathe the dog. It's crazy. He hates water. Callie is petrified of water. And she's a lab. I've been trying to teach her to kayak with me, and um, she prefers to be on the kayak to in the water, but she doesn't like it when the kayak throws her off balance. She freaks out a little. So um, that's interesting. Uh, but she. <sighs> She's a hot mess. So is Tucker. They both are. They're good dogs, though. They give me lots of love. Um, so my bestie Becky is in Australia right now. 
So I think Wrapped in Bowl podcast is on hiatus while she's gone. Um, and she sent me some pictures of a uh, dyer that is local down there in Australia where she is. I think she said it was local to her in Perth. Um, and it is Fisherman's Rib on Etsy. And some of her stuff is beautiful. I fell in love with her, I think it's called Naturally Colorway. And shock and surprise, it is like, like a tealy blue and brownish beige. What? What would make you think I would like that? I have been on a color kick. I actually have two very similar colors to these in Backyard Fibers fingering. And for Christmas from Becky, I got two skeins of uh, three Irish girls. And uh, it's the adorn their adorned sock in a speckly colorway. It's like a cream with green and gold speckles and the skein of gold yarn that matches. The gold yarn has green speckles. So pretty. So pretty. But I am definitely on this green and gold and brown and mint. And I don't even know what it is. But I'm on a kick, evidently. I have a theme going. My stash used to be like blues it was like blues and purples and, and now and then i went to pinks for a while and now it seems that i am onto these like green and browns golds never ever have picked up like a gold toned yarn years ago when i first started knitting it was all about the punch when i looked at something that had a bazillion like blinding neon colors I was all about it and as I've grown as a knitter my my taste in colors has changed quite a bit and it's become uh I don't want to say more subdued because occasionally those pops of color just absolutely do it for me um, but it has become rather than bright I lean towards more rich colors uh, colors with a deeper value i didn't there was a point when i couldn't properly appreciate a variegated yarn um, it had to be something like or I, like i couldn't appreciate a tonal um, it had to be something wildly variegated and now i love stripes and i love speckles like soft speckles um, i i my tastes it could just be that i have some of that zany stuff still in my stash uh, and that maybe I'm just rounding out my stash. But do you guys do that? Do you change colors and change uh, what you like? Like what attracts your eye? Does Has that evolved from the time that you started knitting to where you are as a knitter now or a crafter, spinner, weaver, whatever? Has that evolved for you? I mean, I feel like most of the time when I talk to people who are knitters, they have like a set color palette that is just them but i also remember back when becky and i first met she was like turquoise like this turquoisey teal colors were just absolutely her and it was funny because every time i saw a skein it made me think of her and now she has gone on to grow into like some of these golds and a couple of oranges and I see her now knitting with like magentas and stuff that I don't think when we first met she ever would have picked up. And it just really kind of makes me think about how as we grow and change and our tastes evolve and as we gain new skills, um, because I know now like being able to knit brioche, there's certain things I would be looking for in uh, in yarns to knit brioche. I'm going to be looking for things that have um that have higher contrast i'm going to be looking for things that uh, are opposite each other on the color wheel um you know or potentially you know like complementary and, and but i'm i'm not going to pick up anything that has too much of the same color in it um i was really 
I was really looking at Yarn Rehab, her Guatemalaness. It is gorgeous and it has so many, so many bright colors. It's the colors I think of when I think of drunk toucans at a cabana. So it's got like the yellow and it's got um, some hot pink and let me pull it up because you should really see this stuff if you haven't. It is glorious. Um, but while I'm doing that, I'll continue with the story. So um, when I had originally looked at, you know, what yarn I would, uh, I wanted to do for a brioche project and fingering, that was what I initially thought of was this Guatemalanus from Yarn Rehab. Um, log into Ravelry and if you don't know Yarn Rehab, they're wonderful. They really are. It is uh, Meadowcroft Dye Works and they're based out of Pennsylvania. And as you probably already know, anything Pennsylvania, especially Pittsburgh, is near and dear to my heart. Um, let's see, Yarn Rehab. Uh, and that's also where um, Hipstrings is. Jill from Hipstrings, well, Jill's whole family, but um, Jill is in Allison Park, Pennsylvania, which is uh, relatively close to Pittsburgh, I believe. Uh, I want to go back up there and visit my family. My family is just south of Pittsburgh, and I would be so excited to go see them. So what I was looking at was the Rock Shelter Sock which is a yarn rehab yarn from Meadowcroft Dye Works. And let's get the colorways page. Don't you love it? Like you're just sitting here watching me surf Ravelry. I was going to say captive audience, but the reality is you can hit stop at any time. Please don't, you don't have to. I found it. So this is the Guatemalanus colorway. And I'm going to give, let's see, oh, here you go. See how beautiful that is? The greens are rich and the blue is intense and um, kind of what made me fall for it was this orange right up here. It is glorious and intense and just, it was, quite frankly, what was making me happy. Um, but I wanted to pair it with, um, in looking to do the brioche, I wanted to have that bright, crazy colorfulness uh, tempered by a semi-solid. And so the semi-solid that I was looking at that they had in their, um, in that zone, I believe was this, which is their paella. Please load. And you can see that here. But where I got really nervous about it was if you put them side by side, you see this from the Guatemalanists. See if you look at that, you can see the yellowy orange tones there. And then if we go back to the Guatemalanists, You see the big chunks of yellow and the orange and when I put them side by side I could see where they went together so well but what I was really thinking about is where I knit that yellow the ye the solid color the semi solid that I was going to do and that chunk in the yarn I was going to completely lose the visual aspect of the brioche I would still have the texture, of course, but was, the chunks were too big, so I was going to lose the visual aspect. Um, so now, whereas that Guatemalanus is glorious, and I would be happy to have it and to knit it, um, I do have a skein of 420 in my stash, which is equally amazing. 
load. Load blue, there we go. Um, yeah, you can see the blues and the coppers uh, that I'm drawn to right now. Blues and coppers and browns and yellow. Uh, and that's got some green and some turquoise down towards the bottom. Oh, so beautiful. So I do have a skein of that in my stash. And I could certainly pair that with, with a, with a semi-solid or a tonal um, for brioche. But what I'm looking for now, whereas I used to go for all these zany colors, is a color that has speckles or um, very, very tiny, tiny color repeats. Not repeats even. Um, it's more like speckles and splotches as opposed to chunks of color. So it has had me redefine what I look for in yarn. And it's funny because I kind of always thought, you know, I was, I had a type. I had a, I loved fingering weight. I loved fingering weight and I loved fingering weight in the brightest shades you could imagine. And now I get excited about these. Isn't it crazy? So I would love to hear from you guys. How has your taste in yarn or your the yarn you seek, how has that changed or evolved since you started knitting, since you've gone through gaining new skills and things? Because uh, I would love to hear from you guys if you have uh, the same thing that I do, if you experience the same thing. Oh. Can't wait. Worldwide Knit in Public Day. That is going to be coming up in June. June, I want to say June 12th this year. I have to look it up again. Um, but I will be holding Worldwide Knit and Public Day at, uh, I believe we'll be doing it again at uh, Happy Creek Coffee and Tea, 18 High Street in Front Royal, Virginia. Uh, they graciously loaned us the space last year and hopefully we will uh, be able to have the space this year. I will put details up as it's confirmed, but anybody who is in the local area, please feel free to come out. Um, it's a lot of fun. The people are wonderful. We do a button bar. Um, so there's like an assortment, kind of like how you do a Sunday bar and you have all of the toppings for the Sunday and you get your scoop of ice cream and you just choose what toppings you want. Well, you have your knitting and there are all the containers that have assorted buttons in it and you just choose what buttons you would like to take home with you. Um, and it's just good. It's good fun. Um, I, last year, the amazing, amazing Carrie Lynn from Freckled Whimsy donated three bags for us as giveaways, and we also had, um, we also had as giveaways, um, row counters and, um, measuring tapes and just some fun little things like that. Uh, I believe this year we will have a ball winder. And that's going to be exciting. And uh, I can't wait. I love, love getting knitters all together. I love seeing what everybody else is making, what everybody is working on. And I love the camaraderie that just comes with sitting sitting around people who have like mine. People who um, just reach out and squish your yarn. It's wonderful. Most people that you encounter, well, at least me, most people I encounter when I'm knitting, like I have coworkers who will come in the lunch, the lunch room, the break room, and they'll look at my knitting. And go, That's really pretty. I'm like, you can touch it, and they're like, really? I don't, I don't want to ruin it. It's, like, it's yarn for the love of fiber. Squish it. Anyway, so um, oh. Needles Up will be at Maryland Sheep and Wool this year. I am excited. I will be there um, just hanging out, hopefully getting to see some friends and um, kind of starting the Maryland Sheep and Wool uh, weekend early. So excited. And so that is always the first full Aww. weekend in May. <laughs> and um, let's see. Oh, and before that will be Homespun Yarn Party. 
There is a Ravelry group for Homespun Yarn Party. If you are a local in Maryland or uh, the D.C. area, Maryland, Virginia, D.C., um, I'd say probably even Jersey and Delaware and Pennsylvania, heck, come on down. It is awesome. It is all local businesses, and uh, it's been held since its inception. Um, that's the ballroom at Savage Mill, and I love Savage Mill. It, I just love that place, and it's totally haunted. <laughs> I need a story for another day, but um, it is lovely, and they have tons of shops and things, um, but Homespun Yarn Party is extremely well done. And uh, that's just all local dyers. And if you want a break or you want to get to a small, smaller event, um, something that's definitely intimate, um, the ballroom is definitely gets crowded, but it is an intimate event because it is typically local people, local businesses, and local dyers and local crafters. And we all just get together and have a really good time. So uh, that is Homespun Yarn Party. I can't think of anything else that happens between now and then. So I guess that's it. Happy Sunday, and I hope you have a wonderful week. I look forward to hopefully seeing you guys next weekend. Oh, one thing before I go. The groundhog. I think he lied. I saw about a week ago, I saw... Robins outside digging worms. Saw robins outside. And I was like, okay, well, they shouldn't be here this time of year, but whatever. It's not like I kick them out or anything. I love birds. But then I heard spring peepers. I heard them down by the river and they were peeping up a storm two different nights in a row. And then we had snow, but it was like three inches of slush. But I heard spring peepers. And so I was thinking about that. And when I went outside with my husband today, I looked at my forsythia bush and it is budding out. So I'm getting leaves. And I have irises and daffodils both this tall. So no matter what the groundhog says, don't believe him. Spring is springing. Spring has sprung. Spring Spring is here. It snowed three inches, but spring is here. Don't believe the groundhog. Just, just saying. Just, I'll just have a blizzard next month. I'll totally have to eat my words. <laughs> it's okay. But five separate harbingers of spring have spoken, and I will trust them over a silly groundhog who may have his own motives. Just saying. Trixie groundhogs. <laughs> so, um, hopefully we will enjoy an early spring. I will see you next week, and maybe we will explore this further, or maybe I won't have power next week because it will be under six feet of snow. Never know. <laughs> enjoy your day. Happy knitting, and I'll talk to you next week. Bye! Hey, okay. Chill out. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. See? Girl. Hi, <laughs> puppy girl. Uh, stop that. What is wrong with you? Okay. Chill out. Chill out. Oh my gosh. So, I'm going to have to pause. <laughs> I'm going to have to pause this. What is wrong with you? Oh my gosh. <laughs> What the heck, Callie? Stop. Stop. You do not need to lick my face. Stop. Oh my god. Oh my god. Stop it. <laughs> if I wasn't laughing so hard, I could properly punish her for this. <laughs> So much for it being tranquil. <laughs> ridiculous, okay? That was ridiculous. <laughs> I don't need any more of that. <laughs> what the hell just...
<clears throat> let's, let's dial this one back a bit. Um, 